let's evaluate the surface integral of a scalar field x squared plus y squared plus z squared over the surface. S is a part of the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 16 that lies between the plane z equals 0 and z equals 4 together with its top. This is an important part of this problem. What we're doing is we're not just thinking about evaluating the surface integral over this uh, over the cylinder bounded from 0 to 4, but we're also including the plane z equals 0 over that, uh, well, the, the, not the entire, not the plane, but like the plane with the part of the of the cylinder. We're including that part as well. That's a, that's a part of the sphere as well. However, we can't include it necessarily when with one integral. Um, it, when, if we evaluate it in the methods we've been evaluating, we have to use three separate uh, integrals. We have to use three separate surfaces, and then we have to add them together to find the answer. It's a, it's a tedious process, but it's definitely worth it to get the right answer at the end. If I didn't get the right answer at the end, you wouldn't be seeing this video, so... I most likely try to get the right answers in these videos. So S is a part of the cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals 16. So let's try to work with that first. We can go ahead and parameterize that by setting x equal to r cosine theta, y equal to r sine theta. Now we have a z. Now parameterizing a cylinder is pretty easy in terms of two variables. What we'll do is we'll actually, we're not looking at just a general circle, we're looking at a specific circle for cosine theta, for sine theta, and z will be just equal to z. This is actually the way you parameterize a cylinder, specifically this cylinder. I'll set u equal to theta, and I'll set v equal to z, and that'll make this x equals to cos four cosine u, y equals to 4 sine u, and z equals to just uh, v, given this situation. Now, so that, that gives us the power to define r u comma v, which is going to be 4 cosine u, 4 sine u, and v. And then we can find r sub u of u v, which is negative 4 sine u, 4 cosine u, 0. I know I haven't specified the formula yet. The formula is s of f of x, y, z. And this is for parameterized surfaces. If it's in this form, we can just set that equal to, for parameterized surface, f of r u v times the magnitude of r sub u cross r sub v dA. And then r sub v is just 0, 0, and 1. Now to go ahead and cross them, We have I, J, K, negative 4 sine u, 4 cosine u, and 0, and 0, 0, 1. We end up getting 4 cosine u, I, minus negative 4 sine u, J, and plus, we will get, let's see, 0 cross product. We should have that down by now. So it's just 4 cosine u, 4 sine u, 0. Of course, we, we want to find the magnitude. So it's not just this, it's magnitude of this, which is going to be the square root of 4 cosine u squared, 4 sine, sine u squared, plus 0 squared. So that's 16 times cosine squared u plus sine squared u. Just skipped a step in, in between there, but we'll we'll go on with it because this is going to be a long video otherwise. And and it's not too hard. I hope hopefully you can do simplifications at this point. Four. 
So this is what's going to go in there. Now we have f of r u v, which is going to be something. But remember, f of x, y, z was x squared plus y squared plus z squared. How did I how did I know that? Well, that whoops, whoops sorry about that. Is that which is that? So that's why. So this is going to be 16 cosine squared u plus 16 sine squared u plus v squared, which is going to be 16 plus v squared. Now what? Well, we'll take this, and that's this part. So we can go ahead and set up our integral now over d, which is going to be 16 plus v squared times 4 d a which so if we think about what d is going to be that's the important part i'm going to draw the cylinder so i left some space here we'll draw the cylinder here it's going to be just a generic cylinder let me try to draw that again a generic cylinder this is going to be from 0 to 4 and then so v v is going from 0 to 4 that's what z is and then u is going to go remember u is just this this theta so it's going from 0 to 2 pi, it's the entire circle. If we had only like, for example, the this quarter of the circle, a uh, quarter of the sphere, just this quarter right here, just this quarter, then we wouldn't worry. We wouldn't worry about 0 to 2 pi, but it is 0 to 2 pi because it's the entire circle. This is the, this is the, uh, these are the, what's the word for it? These are the bounds, these are going to be the bounds. So we go from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 4, and this is going to be 16 times 4, which is 64, um, plus 4v squared. Is it dvdu or du dv? Well, it's actually dvdu because of the fact that we're going from 0 to 4 first and then 0 to 2 pi. So let's do the inner portion first. It's going to be 0 to 4. 64 plus 4v squared dv. This is 0 to 4. We don't care about the 0 because it be 0. 64 times 4. 4 to the 4th over 3. What's that going to be? Let's see. 4 to the 4th. 256, 64 times 4 is also 256. They're the same thing, uh, plus 4 to the 4th, uh, or that's 256 by 3. What is 256 plus 256 over 3? That is going to be 1024 by 3. Are we done? We are not done. We have to go over the entire thing. So now it's going to be zero to two pi and it's gonna be one zero two four by three du this is gonna be one zero two four by three u from zero to two pi but then we don't care about the zero it's gonna be one zero two four by three times two pi which is two zero four eight pi by three that's not that's not done. We're not done, though. This is not the answer. If this was the answer, this would be a very, very easy problem. We'd see this before. We've seen. I think we've seen problems like this before. We want to also include the top and the bottom surfaces. So let's include those. So let me actually... Uh, we already have a drawing here. We're including this top, and we're including the bottom. So we'll call this top one S1, and we'll call the bottom one S2. So this means we have to... Evaluate double integral over S1, f of x, y, z, ds, and 
double integral over s2 f of x, y, z ds. How do I define my s? Well, remember, z is 4 and z is 0. Those are what we have. So we can actually write this as g of x, y is 4 and g of x, y is 0. That's how we can rewrite these, which means that this formula, if we want to parameterize it, we can technically, I, I think we can, but we, we honestly, we don't have to because it's probably, uh, well, we can also, since we've defined this as a function, we can go ahead and use the other method where we take the partial derivatives and it's not going to be that hard. In fact, um, if we were to if we were to do that, what would literally happen would be the square root. So I'm actually just going to do it for both of them real quick. The partial g, I, I know I haven't written the formula down, but I'm just going to kind of go along with it because I think we have done examples in the past. So this is going to be partial g, partial x for both of these is just 0. And for both of these, it's just uh, y is also 0. So it's just going to be 0 plus 0 plus 1 for both of these, which is just 1. So really, we actually can convert from this form to, to d by just doing f of xy, g of xy, da for this one, and then and the double integral over d, and then f of xy, g of xy, da. I know I know I have written g of xy for both and they're different g of xy's um, but I, I, I know that's kind of not not good practice but uh, I just want to go along with it just remember that this is this g of xy is for this one and uh, well have I defined it that way yeah I have okay and then this g of xy is for this one so remember g of xy is for for the top one, which is this one, so this is just going to be f of x y comma four, and f of x y z was x squared plus y squared plus z squared. We can write that up here. So f of x y g of x y for for the top one is just going to be x squared plus y squared plus sixteen, and this is for s one, which is this top one. And then f of x, y, g of x, y for the bottom one. And also I'll just say this is s1, s2 is going to be x squared plus y squared plus 0 squared, which is x squared plus y squared. So this is the, this is the, the, the function that we will be looking at, that we converted. And this is for the s1 sur uh, surface and this is for the s2 surface. So functions for those uh, surfaces, if you will. And so this is going to be double integral over d. This is going to be x squared plus y squared plus 16 da. And x squared plus y squared da. And uh, now we can go ahead and, so we can go ahead and define d for in terms of x and y. Or we can convert them to, uh, we can convert them to parametrics using um, circles. So x we can set the x equal to, we can set x equal to r cosine theta and y equal to r sine theta. And then we can go from 0 to 2 pi for theta. And we can go from 0 to 4 for pi, uh, for r. So I'm, not, I'm just going to skip those steps. It's just going to be r squared plus 16. And then this is going to be double integral from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 4. This is going to be dr d theta. But remember the Jacobian, so it's r. And double integral, same stuff, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 4, r squared da. Just to evaluate real quick, um, this whole thing is going to be 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 4, r cubed, or 16r dr d theta, and 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 4, r squared, oh, what have I, what have I done here? <laughs> This is r dr d theta. So this is r cubed dr d theta. I know my handwriting is getting messy and I'm skipping a lot of steps, but um, I don't want this video to be unnecessarily long. It's not too difficult. It's just kind of more difficult than the previous ones. 
And I just want to specify, like, I know I'm, I'm confusing things with the g of x, y's, but I, I, there are different g of x, y's. So, for example, when I did it here, this is s1, which is the surface for the top uh, region, and this is the bottom region. And these are the functions. When we integrate, we're doing over s1 and s2. And when we convert it to a function f of x, y, g of x, y, that's for the conversion of the function over s1 and conversion of the function over s2. So that's why I've done it like s1 colon s2 colon because it's for the conversion for s1, for the conversion for s2. It's kind of, we just wanted to specify that. So this is going to be, if I focus in on this one, it's going to be 0 to 4 r cubed plus 16r dr, which is going to be r to the 4th over 4 is 8r squared. 0 to 4, we can make this 4 cubed plus 8 times 16, which is 64 plus uh, 8 times 16, which I don't know what that is, 64. 192. Then this whole thing is just going to be 192 times 2 pi, which is going to be 192 times 2, which is 384 pi. This one, we can first do the inner one, which is going to be r to the fourth over 4, from 0 to 4, 4 cubed, which is 64. And then this entire one is going to be 0 to 2 pi, 64 d theta is 128 pi. I think hopefully I haven't made mistakes. Um, but we will we will move on. Taking this one, this one, and this one, we can add them together to get the entire, to evaluate the surface integral over all three surfaces, if you will. So 2048 pi. So therefore, 2048 pi by 3 plus 128 pi plus 384 pi is the uh, evaluation, I'll just say. And let me, let me actually simplify this one. 128 times 3 is 384, that's 384 pi over 3. 384 times 3 is 1152 pi over 3. So just adding the tops, the 2048 plus 384 plus 1152 is 3584 pi over 3. That is the entire evaluation of this here. That was a long video. Um, that's why I tried to rush it in between, but hopefully it was helpful. I, I'm pretty sure uh, we haven't made mistakes, but if, you, if you're seeing this video, then there's, there's no mistakes. Okay, you can assume that because I'm repeatedly saying it. But yeah, I just wanted to specify that um, the G of X, Y is were kind of confusing sometimes, but um, you know, hopefully the specifications and the fact that I lined it up uh, a little better was helpful. So this is for S1 and this this function corresponds to well, the integration over S1. So that's why this function corresponds to integration over S1. So that's why it's associated and that's why I did that.